Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about factory design pattern. So let's take an example where we can potentially apply factory design pattern. So here I'm just trying to create a game application. So it's like a superhero game uh, where I'll have a lot of superheroes like say Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batman and of course a base class called superhero. You can see here class superhero and of course uh, it has an energy level each superhero will have an energy level and uh, the superhero will have a character name and I have a utility function as well here and there are some virtual uh, pure virtual functions like do damage do action set energy level and blah blah and each character derived from the superhero base class publicly and say uh, in my game application say I have you know you know that uh, in a uh, PC game you will have a lot of scenarios maybe you'll have more than thousand scenarios in a good game so here uh, the the need of the superhero is that uh, if a player is in need of a help we can bring a superhero and of course the superhero character will be character and its energy level will be based on the current player score say for example if uh, my current score is less than 10 I need a you know better support something like that so you can see here so I have a function called in scenario level 1 I'm just creating a hero and I'm just checking if my score is less than 20 I'm sorry if it's between 10 and 20 I'm creating a spider-man I'm checking a I'm uh, you know uh, setting up the energy as 50 some numbers yeah and if my score is bef uh, between 40 and 20 I'm creating a Batman and blah 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 that's it and of course we are uh, requesting the superhero to do his action perfectly fine there is no problem but imagine in a in a uh, game kind of scenario we will have we, we may need to create objects like this in several places and it's not a good idea to do all this kind of creational logic uh, repeatedly there we can use a factory design pattern very well okay so uh, I'm just going to delete this function and I'll actually use my main function here so you can see here I have a hero factory class so hero factory class will have a method called create hero so we decided that based on the player's goal we will provide him the corresponding or required superhero character with a particular energy level so yeah so whenever we need to we need assistance we can just call we can create a, or we can create a factory we can just get the superhero superhero star uh, it's a pointer and we are saying hey factory create the hero my current score is I'm sorry I'm getting this window pop up sometimes so yeah if my score is 10 I need the corresponding superhero and I'm just trying to use it in various places you can see it's uh, from a client perspective whoever is using this uh, object it's very clean code you don't need to do a lot of decision making because the factory itself encapsulates the creation logic it's very centralized and see uh, here see the creation of the superhero ca character it's very depend on the runtime case say based on the player score we need a particular superhero of course the factory pattern uses the polymorphism so you can see here the superhero character so here it's written a superhero and of course all the characters are derived from the superhero and the actual complex creational logic is encapsulated here so let's run this and see <clears throat> yeah so I create a superhero with my current score 10 then again I can just say hero level 1 do action whatever we need and so on and I'll just try to print the hero name you can see we got an iron man from the factory because my score is 10 when I when my score was 30 we got a Batman 
when it was born I got a spider-man yeah so that's all about factory design pattern in a nutshell factory design pattern encapsulates the complex creational logic within a small function and it's very handy for the users that's all thank you very much